Celebrities are what matters in America, and we watch their every move. It's time for Fizz. It's Fizz time, everybody. The celebrity show that puts the lobotomy back on the cultural agenda. I'm Jane Labrador, and I'm joined as ever by Marcel Lemieux and Jeffron James. And boy, have we got a freshly stuffed show for you today. That's right. Lie on your stomach and bite your pillow, America. Let's find out what's happening in this crazy world of unceasing celebrity banality. Let's get down and dirty. Dragon Brain, the movie build is more CGI. Less story is sending America dragon crazy. Now, here is a movie only fat trolls from the suburbs could enjoy. A bunch of pale, inbred, religious. They're just wackos running around in leather clothing hitting each other with pointy sticks. What are you talking about? It's fantastic. I can't wait until it comes out in high def so you can see every tear in his tunic as the orcs try to mate with Lord Absentinos. We wanted to speak to the star of the show, Clive Letter, but unfortunately, his publicist says his pension for DWIs has him very busy pretending to console the family of the father he killed. Instead, we've got Dragon Brain child star Christopher Tibbetts who played William of Mamory in the film. Here's a piece. Lord Absentinos, I've never even touched a girl's bottom. Your sword is enormous. That's powerful stuff. Thanks. I really learned a lot while doing this film. I learned how to be a self-absorbed and materialistic prick. And the director taught me how to roll a joint. Christopher, your life must be really exciting right now. Just starting to figure out if you like girls or boys. Oh, it is. I've got a bunch of new Vinewood friends. And I get to wear sunglasses indoors. Plus, I've started doing coke. What is your favorite memory from the set of Dragon Brain? Oh, it was great. Between takes, Armin McBardvine, who played the wizard, he'd take me back to his trailer. He performed spells on his trousers and made them grow. He is so cute. I could just eat him up. Yeah, eat him up, because there's nothing more appetizing than a tween with a drug problem and a massive ego. What a dick. Also, we spoke with Magellan. Now, you may remember Magellan from the 80s. His European synth rock was very popular for a while, and now he's planning a comeback. Good to see you, Magellan. I used to love your records. Why, of course you did. You're our only human being. And now you're making a comeback. Yeah, Magellan wants to set the record straight. It is time for everyone to accept the facts. Magellan has had an enormous influence on the music world. Before me, the records, they didn't spin. Really? Yeah, that is super. That is true. Magellan is force of nature. Like death, I invent the wave. The wave of rock. That is why I have lace glove. Meanwhile, in comedy news... Reporter Susan Retriever spent this morning getting tested for herpes. So instead, we all had an incredibly exciting conversation with top comedian Ricky Gervais, who was performing at Split Size to rave reviews. Hey, Ricky, I got a serious question. How come people from England never laugh? There's not many people go around in England just laughing because they enjoy it, because then they'd be mental. I mean, you see some people on the street just walking around laughing at nothing, but they, they also piss in their, their pants and punch pregnant women in the face. So it's, I mean... I saw a movie about England once. What was what was the movie? I don't know, but one man wore a leather hood and the other one cried a lot. Great. Well, at least you remember where you saw it. Good. You do jokes about fat people. Some fat people were going to protest your show. Um, a lot of them didn't make it. A lot of them sort of stopped halfway and took their breath. And then, then some turned up with um, placards, but the placards looked tasty. So um, they were eaten. You mentioned in your act that while you're here, you've seen lots of commercials for the Relax Power X motorized scooter. Yeah, well, that's, um, that shows a lot of ingenuity where they've, um, as opposed to trying to find ways to um, lose weight, if they've found ways to uh, cut walking out. But I'd suggest, um, you know, on a motorised sort of bike, you've still got to do something. So what you want to do is get the pavements moving. So you can just, like, literally fall out of bed, flat on your face, and a pavement can move you to the, you know, the pizza shop. And you can, he could liquidise that. Obviously, if you really want to rule out any movement chewing, he could actually inject it straight up your anus. You've said some nasty things about our best friends, the paparazzi. If they don't stalk people like you, we wouldn't have a job. Uh, well, 
the paparazzi are, are doing a job, aren't they? Um, they like to hide in trees and bushes and um, take photographs up um, famous people's dresses. And um, I'm not going to judge anyone. And if, uh, you know, most people were to um, hide in a tree taking pictures of topless women on a beach, they'd be arrested. But if you go, no, it's all right, it's for a newspaper. It's my job. They go, oh, go, go on then. Spy on all the women you like. You're not a pervert. You're working for a newspaper. What shows do you like on American TV? Um, I like uh, America's Next Top Hooker. That's good. I like um, The Serrated Edge. Uh, That's just a show selling knives. Yeah, they're all different, aren't they? You can't have too many knives. What do you think about the tragic DWI arrest of Chloe Parker? She's gone through enough, hasn't she? She's going to jail now. She's had a hard life. She's, she's suffered. She suffered like Mandela. And now it's time for us to try and get her out and ma make her a leader. What a great interview. I just love British men. That's all we have time for. But remember, if a celeb shows their crack or smokes it, you'll find out first on Finn.